I can't hear the member. The chairman. Thank you. Um, I call the honourable member Kennedy Graham. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just wanted to so, uh, make a few comments about uh, Schedule 1 on SOP 246 <clears throat> and to pick up on, on one or two of the points that had been made earlier and, and perhaps explore them a little further. Um, we, we understand well that from 246 that the intent is to provide uh, supplementary money in the tune of uh, $27 million for uh, uh, property output expenses, demolition, and um, three million extra for essentially property purchases, demolition related. Um, and that the reason for the SOP is because the budget moratorium period from 11 April to 19 May uh, was covering the period of cabinet decision making that um, spanned the 22 February period. So the Green Party. Um, I make clear from the beginning has no difficulty in, in, in voting for this SOP. I, I must say um, perhaps the House could advise uh, with respect the Honourable David Cunliffe to resist the temptation to speak on behalf of the House uh, in full knowledge of the fact that the, the Green Party had in fact opposed the original bill, Sierra Bill at the time, and we had done so um, for good reason. I won't rehearse the reasons. We, we conveyed them at the time. Uh, we supported the purpose of the recovery of, of the SERA. Um, but we judged the powers granted under the SERA bill to be excessive for that purpose. That said, it is history. And we do not oppose, uh, never did, an appropriate amount of funding, of course, for the rebuilding of Christchurch. Um, and I believe we are all cooperating vigorously across party lines to that end. Uh, I, I, for one, sir, have held three public forums um, entitled Vision Christchurch with a view to, um, from since April through to June, with the aim of engaging experts and, and the public together to embrace a vision of a future eco city uh, that would be Christchurch in the future, reflecting 21st century values and technology one in Christchurch Central at the end of April, one in New Brighton a few weeks ago, and, and one just two days ago in, in Littleton. And they've been very well attended, uh, about 100 to 200 people at each meeting, superb presentations and an animated discussion. Uh, we've had geotech consultants and landscape planners, architects, civil engineers, transport specialists, community sociologists and iwi leaders. Uh, and I plan to get all that information from those meetings and, and uh, channel it into the cross-party forum uh, under the uh, chairmanship of the minister uh, before very long. So we are all collectively combining our strengths to rebuild the city and in good faith. Um, but I just did want to point out that uh, it would be presumptuous to, to just assume on behalf of the whole House that, that we're all in favour of everything that has gone before. A couple of specific points, if I may, um, about Schedule 1, and, and, and also just to touch on the issue that attends, I think, this, namely the psychology that has changed. I think uh, Mr Cunliffe was correct when he said that uh, post-June 13, the psychology in Christchurch has changed. Indeed, it has. I think uh, the, the psychology was from September 4 uh, until June. It, it went through February 22. It went up to June 13 with all the trauma of February 22. Those first two meetings I spoke about, there was a, an upbeat mood about rebuilding Christchurch. And then post June 13, uh, the most recent meeting, I was convening it in Littleton in this new psychology where there is a, I wouldn't call it a malaise, I would call it a, a deep trauma on the part of the residents. It has bifurcated the city into those who are basically making up a, def a definitive decision to leave. Uh, anything perhaps a fifth of the city. We will find out. And I was, I was apprehensive as we went into this uh, forum on Sunday about that mood. But, sir, I found that those 60, 70 to 80 percent of, of the residents who are still resolved to remain in Christchurch the determination to rebuild the city post-June 13 came through just last Sunday afternoon in this meeting, about 115 people present, came through loud and clear and was arguably the most inspiring experience I've had in the whole of the earthquake um, experience to date. 
so I think we can take uh, consolation from that and, and a certain amount of confidence that we're actually going to get there. So, um, Mr. Mr. Chair, because uh, I have a couple I of questions. I call the, the Honourable Member Kennedy Thank you, sir. Graham. Just to pick up on the figures and to pick up on where Mr. Nash left off and, and, and address these questions to the Minister, but I want to take it a little bit more with a little bit more specificity. We're talking about $27 million in demolition, and I, I have no query of that. Um, I just query whether $27 million plus $3 million equals $30 million. It will prove to be enough in, in the fullness of time. Um, $3 million for property purchases. The CBD, I've been down there. Um, I come and go. I live there most of the time. I left at uh, 8 o'clock this morning. I went in for a, a radio a New Zealand interview downtown Christchurch this morning at 7.15. I go into the red zone a couple of times. Um, Mr Cunliffe's description is correct. It is an eerie experience. 1,000 buildings, most likely now. A couple of months ago it was 242, then it was 300, then 900. It's over 1,000 buildings coming down. That is anything over 50%. 50% to 60% of the buildings coming down. Um, $3 million for property purchase. My, my question to the, to the Minister is, because we're talking just about the CBD, as I understand it, for that $3 million, what is the percentage of those buildings? If we just, as a broad operating assumption of 1,000 buildings coming down. Now, under the SARA powers, the Minister has the powers of requisition. So the question is, what is the percentage of those buildings, if this is possible to answer, does that $3 million pertain to and does it pertain in any way to requisition? Because Mr Nash was talking about purchasing private property if it's being sold or insured property. My question is, because, and, and this is the issue I have found in all three meetings, the most excruciating, I think, the most excruciating tr challenge of all for the rebuild the relationship between the private and the public sector. Cooperation between... I sat through a, a business meeting last night in Christchurch of about 30 business people and heritage people uh, interested. I know the agony that those business owners are going through and the risk of capital flight sooner rather than later out of Christchurch. They're on the verge of moving. But there will also be, on the other hand, there will be private owners who will refuse necessarily to act in the public interest. And the public interest, what we're trying to do, what I'm trying to do with my three meetings is to, to, to generate a public mood where the public interest in a re-envisaged city it becomes palpable and the public interest can be expressed by the Sarah Minister and Roger Sutton. And there will be, even with the 40% or 50% of buildings left standing, there may be intransigent private owners and I think the single biggest challenge to the government, and it's the challenge to all of us as a society, cross-party forum the lot, how do you deal with that? If you have a vision, I have seen architects, PowerPoints, with a vision of a new Echo City, and there could be some buildings in the road. Does the $3 million pertain to requisition? I wouldn't necessarily critique it. I, I, I was critical of excessive powers, but I understand the powers exist. They can be used in the public interest. I'd be intrigued to hear the answer on that point. Mr Chairman. I call the Honourable Minister 